Coming up on this week's episode of the Ask Women podcast, we talk about sex, sex, and more sex. We talk about what women want, how to talk about sex with a woman, how to get her to do things that you like to do, but she's not really that into. We talk about kink. We talk about where to get experience sexually if you're not that experienced, places that are open to the public and tons of people are openly talking about sex and exploring sex. Anyway, the whole thing is about sex. It's fantastic. We have Susan Campbell on the show. So keep listening. Hey guys, welcome to the Ask Women podcast. We do not have Kristen with us today. Sadly, she is a bit under the weather, but that's fine because we have Susan Campbell on our show. So we don't need Kristen Carney, even though she's fantastic and wonderful. Susan Campbell was on our show, I'd say like four or five months ago. And I think it is one of our top listened to shows of all time. So people obviously like what Susan has to say, which is why I'm going to let her talk a lot on this episode, but I'll introduce her now. So Susan, welcome back to the show and thank you so much for coming back on. Well, thanks, Marnie. And I did enjoy it last time. So I'm glad to be back. Yeah. So, okay. So you had written to me about some topics that you wanted to discuss. And as soon as you wrote them, I was like, yes, we're totally talking about this stuff. So let me just read back to you what you had said. How about the topic of sex? (laughs) So how, how can I say no to that? Because I'm sure lots of guys who are listening want to hear about women and sex. You said what women want, how to find out what a particular woman wants, how to talk about safe sex, how to deal with dating more than one woman at a time when uh, you want to be sexual with at least one of them, what to do if she's not into what you're into, example, kink, and a ton of other things that you you suggested, which I think are amazing topics. So if you're ready to go, I'm ready to go. And I want to dive into, first off, Women and sex, what women want. All right. So women want you to be attuned to them. And that's probably not that much different from what you want, which is you want the woman to be attuned to you. Right. But since I'm talking mostly to men here, how do you attune to a woman? What does attunement mean? Yeah. It means, first of all, paying exquisite attention to where she's looking, to how her body is positioned in relationship to you, and dancing with that. Like, let's say you move closer to her, not necessarily moving in for the the kiss, but you're just moving closer to her because you feel drawn to her. Yeah. Does she stay right where she is and look at you? and have some relaxed look or does she move away a little look down can you notice her body tension coming up these are actually things you marnie have spoken to on your blog yeah but I'm, i'm just echoing some of these things and asking people to notice the subtle things that are going on that you can see but also how do you attune you have to be honest about what's going on inside you right so if she moves away and looks away and you start to get a fear reaction which is kind of normal you guys yeah we don't expect you to be perfect we don't expect you to not have emotions and certainly we know that fear of rejection everybody has that yeah especially with sex yeah well, I'm actually talking first about how, how would you even know if the person is open, ultimately going to be open to you sexually? Yeah. Well, so, so how, how do you know? Starting, yeah, we're starting there. Because if, 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 if you're moving toward her and she's moving away, you might then need to use some words like, I noticed that when I moved toward you, you moved away. Can you tell me what that was about? And then don't keep talking. Even if there's an awkward silence, you might be afraid she's going to be uncomfortable. Most women that you're going to be attracted to are able to handle a little bit of discomfort in the moment. Yeah. I mean, if, no, if you're going to have to tiptoe around on eggshells 
for the rest for the rest of your dating life with her or the rest of right. your marriage if you want to go that far. You don't want this woman. So trust her to be able to handle a silence because those are really potent. Those are the moments if you guys can hold a silence together while you're still paying attention to her. I think for most women that's very impressive that you don't try to go into, you know, some automatic act. Right, or a solution or defense. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. What what's what's and that begins to build some sexual tension that that silent moment when neither of you knows what's going to happen next. So I want you to learn to value those moments where you've just kind of stepped into the unknown. You asked her a question, could be a slightly uncomfortable moment for her to figure out, well, what does she want to say? Does she want to admit that she wished you hadn't moved toward her? Or maybe she liked it, and that's going to be hard to admit sometimes. So being sort of grounded in yourself, like during that silence, breathe and just keep paying attention. And then if you, if it's really a long silence, of, of course you, you can say something like, was that uncomfortable for you when I asked that? And then if, you know, if she doesn't answer that and you, you know, then please move away, change the subject. No moment is so important that you can't kind of redo it. Right. So uh, lighten things up then and say, well, hey, um, you want to talk or do you just, w- just want to lie here some more or something like that? Right. You know, give multiple. If, if you don't know what the woman wants, it's good to give multiple choice questions because that shows that you're open to both answers. Like, do you, do you want me, do you want to still you know, hang out tonight, or are you ready to call it a night? Again, that would be a multiple choice question so that she sees that you're not forcing her into one option option or another. Right. So that's another thing that a woman wants is she does she doesn't want to be controlled. And again, do you want to be controlled? Who wants to be controlled? Well, so a, lo- a lot of guys do hear like they do want a ma- like women want a man that's aggressive, that knows how to lead, that's assertive in the bedroom. So, can you explain the distinction? Because you just said being controlled, yeah. but at the same time, to be honest, I do like it when a man just goes for it. Yeah, controlled is different than going after what you want. If you know the woman likes you, see that's the there's these. There's these, if you know the woman likes you and you know that's what she wants, not all women want the same thing. You know, right. you heard what Marnie wants. A lot of women say that. And a lot of the dating coaches tell you that's what you have to be. I think, I, I think you need to first, does she like you? And then does she, does she like that approach? And sometimes the way to find out is just, is just try it. But if that's not your natural way, see, Marnie, you know, a lot of guys, that is not their natural way. And they push themselves to be some caveman type of thing. And it just, it it doesn't work for them. So I I don't think that maybe if you're a person that where the woman really needs that, you might need to talk about the fact that you're not as, let's say, assertive in the sheets as right. she might like, but as you get more confident with the woman, you probably will be. And I think that's, that's something you could, if you know that it's just not your thing, you might say, you know, I read a lot of these books. I listen to dating help podcasts and right. I hear that women want that. Is that true of you too? Yeah, you know, because certainly you ought to be able to talk about sex before you do it. If you're able to go inside of a person, you should be able to have a conversation yeah. with a person. <laughs> That's what yeah. I think. Unless you're just doing it for one night. But but I think even, you know, we don't want to get into things being too technical and saying, did you like this? Did you like that? But at the same time, it can be very sexy to have an open conversation about a person's desires and their yes. fantasies and their wants and how they like things. Yeah. As long as you don't make it too technical and robotic. Yeah. And, and do it outside the bedroom. You know, at least at first. I mean, there are, you know, if you are incompatible sexually in some way, then there are some some tools we can talk about later. But right now we're just talking about 
what goes on between a normal man and a normal woman where they're probably going to enjoy it once they get into it, once once he knows a bit about what she likes. And then pay attention. Again, when you're, let's say you do the dominant thing without even talking about it, because that's just, you get you get this feeling of, of confidence around her. I mean, if you get this feeling of confidence around her, that you know, then you're going to be more assertive. So I would say try it and then watch for the responses. But pausing now and then just to kind of look at each other, you don't have to talk that much. I mean, some, you know, some people say, you know, you should be talking all the time during sex. I, I think that's completely dependent on people's personality styles. Right. I mean, you know, if, if she's the kind of person that discloses her, her thoughts easily, well, you might want to say anything you need, you know, any requests, make it lighthearted, you know, any requests, or would you like me to do this a, l- a little harder or a little softer? Or yeah. did you like, you know, w- did you like it when I, w- when I just came at you like that and, you know, we're doing it? Or would you have preferred a little slower approach? Again, multiple choices will help a woman tell you what she wants and feel like she doesn't have have to sugarcoat it for you because you right. kind of put both the good news answer and the bad news answer as both choices. And frankly, women do have a little trouble saying what they want. Uh, do, do you think that? Oh, yeah, for I, sure. I think women have been taught that we're you know, supposed to be givers. And so remember that. And, uh, and also some women don't make sounds. They don't give you any feedback. You're going to have to live with that for a while. Oh. Well, actually, let me ask you a question. So do you have to live with that? Because is, do they not make sense because they're not, or certain not make sounds because they're not comfortable or do some women not make sounds just because it's not their thing and that's not what they're feeling at that point in time? That's what, that's what you want to have a discussion about afterwards outside right. the bedroom, but I wouldn't be asking that during the act. Right. No, no, no. Cause that just gets her to close off instantly. You really get to know each other. Then you can stop in the. I mean, I honestly think people ought to stop in the middle every once in a while and just check in with each other. But that's just because sex is so automatic for a lot of people, and they think they know where the other person is. And sometimes you can get really in your own little world with sex if you're if you're you're really hot and heavy. But that that's for a later stage. I'm you know the talking, checking in during sex. But I, I do think that's an important skill. But let's say it's one of the early sex encounters that you, you're having. Talk about, I think you should debrief it afterwards, you know, unless it's obvious. I'm talking about if she didn't make any sounds and you're not sure. If, are you just the, the kind of person who's, who's kind of silent? I want to, you know, I want to understand a woman's experience. What can you tell me? And yeah. a lot of women might have trouble giving you a really good answer, but we do like it that you're interested in our experience. Oh, a hundred percent. Let me ask you a question. So I want to go back to this statement that many women do make of, I do want the guy to be a little bit more dominant. I just want him to take me and do it. You have a background in psychology. Can you expand on that a little bit more from the female point of view? What, What is it that women are trying to say with that statement? Because I think it can be very confusing for a lot of guys. Because there's, there's a ton of times where I don't want somebody to be aggressive, but what I I believe I really want underneath that statement is I want to feel like he wants me, especially somebody that I really like. I want to feel wanted, whether it's slow and calm, but clear that he wants me, or assertive and a little bit rough at the base of it it it's it's this desire that's there to be with me do you know if that's for all women if that's for some women i think all all of us pretty much want to be wanted you know again that's a human thing in sex especially we want to know that we're special we're attractive and we want to we want to feel wanted how you know, so back to the dominance style of showing her you're wanted. 
I think you, why women, yeah, I think you, you asked, why do women, why do women want that? So other than wanting to be wanted, I think it is a bit reassuring to some, to some of us have rejection fears. You know, we do have fears that maybe we're not as perfect as we'd like to be. We're not as attractive. Like, again, these are common fears that both men and women have. And anything that can help a woman forget about those fears and just feel beautiful, the more she feels wanted and beautiful, the more she's going to shine love in your direction. And it's going to be a big cir- circle of passion and of love. But as you suggested, Marnie, and as I was saying earlier, you can want her in a number of ways, but it is good eventually to accept your own style of giving. Because some some people's style of giving may be a little a little more tentative, not because they don't want you. Uh, you know, I'm talking about men now, not not because the man doesn't want the woman. But they might they might simply have had some bad experiences in the past that they're they're still a little call it gun shy. Right. And um, you just if you can accept that about yourself and move forward anyway, it's like feel the fear and do it anyway, because the want for her focus on the want for her and focus on how she wants to feel you want her if that if that. If you're getting signals that she's receptive and open and likes it, that's going to build your confidence. So that's going to be kind of a circle. But if you're getting signals, no signals at all, or signals that she's uncomfortable, she has to keep changing positions and this sort of thing, um, you might you might have to pause and say, is there anything you need me to change about what I'm doing here? So you need to be asking if, if you're not getting the expected and hoped for response from the woman you need to be asking so you can modify your behavior in the service of both of you having a good time but this some some women want to be let's say dominated as a way of almost avoiding them ever having to feel their own wants so that can be a little bit of a a lack for men. Men want to feel wanted too. And so some some men, and, and just be honest if this is you, some men go, well, I want to feel wanted too. And I'm always having to initiate. Right. So if, you know, if that's the case, again, have conversations outside the bedroom about this and try to be open to the fact that, you know, most women don't learn the moves for showing that they want a man. I mean, I, I belong to a subculture where women did learn those moves. So I want you to remember there's a lot of different subcultures among women. And part of it has to do with what age we are, but part of it has to do, when I say subculture, I mean, there's a lot of subcultures where like in the subculture I grew up in, we were all going to personal growth workshops and communicating about everything. We were having nude encounter groups where, you know, and, oh, everybody was hot tubbing naked together. I mean, my subculture is just much, much more open and, you know, lots of sex workshops. Right. You know, people lear- and learning how to do a woman, how to do a man. I mean, you get confidence from going to workshops, frankly. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I suggest you train yourself. We have a joke in my subculture where we say we like a trained man and the women know what they mean. And the men know, men know what we mean too. But, you know, I'm not sure. And some of the younger people, and that might be more your population, Marnie. Oh gosh, I'm, like not, in that, I'm not in that subculture anymore. I, I actually don't yeah. even know what 20 year olds would say when yeah, it comes but to I sex. Was, I was on a, I was on a webinar um, the other day where we talked about sex and relationships and a lot of them were Europeans, but they said, you know, people should have sexual mentors. And, and I, and I say to myself, well, geez, I've, I've mentored many men and many men have mentored me, you know, in the ways of sex. 
No, because that's what we do in my subculture. But they were saying, you know, they most of them had never even heard of the concept of sexual mentoring. And and part of what that where you can get your sexual mentoring is from workshops. But in my subculture, it was just a generous thing to do. You know, <laughs> I mean, you see a man who's a little less experienced, you say, Come on, honey, let me show you how to do a woman or Oh my God. Know? Everyone's I mean, like, where is this subculture and how to become a part of it? Well, so I so I wanted to dive into that a little bit more. <laughs> I love I I think it's fantastic because I, I like I know how we got introduced. So I'm assuming our mutual friend is part of that subculture, Susan Braddon, who's wonderful. And she probably is. She probably is. She's yeah. got a lot of she's she's she workshops. Yeah. yeah. And I know plenty of people who are in that subculture. It's not my subculture, but I I I myself, even though I'm very comfortable talking about this stuff and being inquisitive and I never had a sexual mentor, I would probably like one in my life. But I, I'm still, I am still timid when it comes to the bedroom. I'm becoming more adventurous, more open, more free, more talkative, and more expressive as years go by. But at the core of it, I'm still quite timid compared to many other people. And for a lot of guys, I'm guessing they may be interacting with women who maybe are with myself 15 years ago. Yeah. How do right. guys mentor these women like let's just even say that they're not very experienced but how do guys mentor women without shaming them or creating more discomfort and having them close off so having you know the opposite effect to what they're trying to achieve well again if if outside of the bedroom you have a conversation let's say you're a confident fairly you know fairly confident guy and and by the way, I know a lot of guys that I work with in dating coaching where they're pretty darn confident in the bedroom, but they're not confident talking. Right. You know, so you know, this, is, this is too bad, right. but I'm going to say, give it a, give it a try anyway. So let's say you're one of those guys, but you will have to initiate if you like aren't getting any signals that she had a good time, for example. You'll have to initiate a, a conversation. First of all, like, do you even like to talk about sex? Are you open to talking about, you know, what each of us experienced right. last night when we were in bed together? So you have to move into it gently, both for yourself and for her. And let's say she says, well, yeah. And it, you say, I, well, I noticed that you were, you know, you were quite silent. and." Um, it was hard for me to tell what was going on for you. Would you be willing to say more about what was? You know, give her an open-ended question first. But if she's having a hard time, then you got to go back and give a right. multiple choice, which would be something like, were you hoping it would end soon? Or would you like it have to have gone on longer? Or none of the above. You know, because none of the above is kind of a humorous right. thing to throw in there. And so I like to keep it lighthearted, even though it's a serious topic. And, and don't be too jokey about it. Because it, she wants to feel safe if you do right. too much joking. But you want to let her know that any, even not, none of the above is, a, is an okay answer. So you kind of tease out. From her, first of all, just how comfortable she is talking about sex. And then are there, you know, then you guys probably need to talk about how many sexual partners have we each had? Is this an area where you've, you know, talked to, you know, have a lot of different lovers and you've talked a lot about sex? Or is this kind of new for you to, to be having this kind of conversation? So, again, the sort of mentoring starts in a verbal conversation by assessing how you might serve her if you, you know, if you want to. A lot of times you just have a sexual relationship, you know, in terms of what, what, how you get sexual mentoring, you just have happened to find yourself in a sexual relationship with a, for me, for example, with a guy who was a little yeah. older and more experienced. And that was my first sexual mentor. I mean, he didn't say I'm going to mentor you, but he showed but, you things, you know, once I had, once I had that, you know, I mean, my confidence was, could not be shaken. And that was in my early twenties, thank God, you know, so that was so nice to have, have that. So, um, if you think you can offer that 
to the woman. I mean, try not to be arrogant about it because you may be wrong. <laughs> you may right. not. You may be like, I don't want to learn from you. <laughs> you You're not that good. That may not be your problem, you know? Right, exactly. <laughs> don't assume anything. But, you know, if you really do have some chops in the bedroom, um, you know, I, I, unfortunately, Marnie, I've known a lot of guys. Right, who I think know, they I do. Mean, one guy who think they do. He, he, he was a gynecologist and so, no. you know, I thought, oh boy, you know, and then he also used the term for himself. I'm a world-class lover. And I, oh you God. know, and then, you know, he, he might've been with some women, but he wasn't with me, you know? Right. But that's There's, the interesting thing to know as well, that it, what can work with one may not work for somebody else, which is what you touched exactly. on in the beginning of this. Exactly. So you may have been, su- you know, super appreciated, you know, by the by the last five women you were with, but now this one's the one you really want. Right. And you're having some trouble figuring out if she likes you or if she likes sex with you. So I think the best way is to say, we probably, you know, this is a sentence that it would be nice to see if you can feel comfortable saying, we probably need to show each other what we like. Mm-hmm. How would that be for you? And this is if things are not, are not working smoothly. Right. Um, or we could at least talk about it, like what kinds of things that I was doing were working and what wasn't working so well. And I know most People will say, oh, you know, I don't want to talk about that. That's very right. uncomfortable. But or it's rude or feedback, I don't want to hurt your feelings. Yeah. Yeah. Feedback is how we learn. And of course, we don't have to say anything in a rude, judgmental way. But we could say, you know, I liked it when. And what didn't work so well was. And if you cannot handle as a man that kind of feedback, then go to some workshops where you get that kind of feedback because right. they, they, they do exist. You'll have to Google them up to, to find. Well, so what, are, what are they looking up? Cause I, cause um, I'd be curious about that as well. Cause I get tons of guys who write into me saying I'm not very sexually experienced or I'm a virgin or I'm afraid that a woman's going to find out I don't have that much experience. Are these live workshops that you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So, so what would they search for? Like sex workshop? Uh, G-spot massage workshop. Uh, okay. How to do a woman workshop. Well, Morehouse in Lafayette, California, which is right in your neck of the woods, I think, Martin. Yeah. They have courses on how to do a man, how to do a woman, how to have, how to have <laughs> one hour orgasms. Yeah. <laughs> and they also sell products. And they're, and Susan Bratton's a wonderful resource. I think oh, she's, she's amazing. Yeah. Perhaps. So, um, personallifemedia.com yeah. is her website. And if she can't help you, she can point you in the direction. But I, I do happen to know that it's called Moore University, M O R E, Moore University. They have very explicit courses. And you do sex with somebody that you're not in love with. So it is a little really? technical, okay. but once, yeah, I mean, they, they, you, I mean, you like the person and you don't have intercourse. You usually just do due dates it, it, for most of them, but it What's gets a due you date? comfortable. Due date means one way sex. I learn how to pleasure a woman. Wow. I learn how to go down on her. I know how to use my hands. I learn how to turn her on. And this is a woman who's also wanting to learn as well, or is it somebody that works yeah, for them? Okay. Yes, this is another participant in the workshop. It's not an employee. And then there are, you know, there are workshops where the people are employees, like they, ha- they have two workshop leaders and like an attractive, sexy, female, right. sort of a surrogate person. Wow. So, um, okay. Oh, and sexual, sexual surrogates. Now, they're, they're, I just said the word, yeah. but um, look up sexual surrogates. Uh, again, Susan can probably, Susan Bratton. I mean, I used to know a lot of sexual surrogates. I would use them in conjunction with my coaching practice. Sort of lost touch w- with who's out there and doing it now, but right. that's a bona fide profession. And if you need mentorship, you, you know, you do have to pay for it, but it's not exorbitant. Yeah. It's cheaper than a prostitute. <laughs> generally. 
<laughs> right, exactly. And it's not a prostitute. That's that's the difference. It's like you're no, actually not, learning. No, e- well, even if you go with a prostitute, you still could be horrible. That's the, You're just getting off. Right. That's the whole thing. This is actually learning and perfecting and owning a skill, which you can transfer over to other people, which I think is awesome. I have to take a quick break, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back with Susan Campbell after this because I love what we're talking about. So stay with us. Who doesn't want less stress in their life unless you're some sort of crazy masochist? You want less stress. You know what? I think masochists even want less stress in their life so they can make room for the stresses that they actually enjoy. So if you want to make time for stresses that you actually enjoy, I've got some good news for you because I've got a solution. And that solution is to pay off your credit card balances and save money with a credit card consolidation loan from my friends at Lightstream. Get a rate as low as 5.95% APR with auto pay. Plus, your rate is fixed. So as the rates continue to rise, your rate won't move at all. Not even a little to the right. And just for our listeners, apply now to get a special interest rate discount. The only way to get this discount is to go to lightstream.com slash askwomen. That's L-I-G-H-T-S-T-R-E-A-M dot com slash askwomen. Subject to credit approval, rate includes 0.5% auto pay discount. Terms and conditions apply and offers are subject to change without notice. Visit lightstream.com slash askwomen for more information. All right, we are back. I interrupted you at like a peak moment, but I think that that was amazing advice that you gave to people because I know that for a lot of guys who do not have as much experience, or maybe they've had experience with several girls, but want to be better knowing that there's shameless resources. I don't even know if I should put that label onto it, but just that there's 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 resources out there. There's things that you can do if this is an area that's causing you anxiety and stress. And you, we all know that, you know, anxiety and stress does not lead for great performance in the bedroom. Um, so anything that can alleviate yeah. Are that. Are we live or not? Is this our break? Is oh, no, we're, we we, break oh, no, sorry. Yeah, we're, we're back. We're back onto the show. Sorry. I know it's a quick break. It's like we're a little, back. it's we're a back. cheat for you. Yeah, and I. well, I, 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 you know, Burning Man, I don't know how many people, the, the, no, the Burning Man is sort of a subculture, but there's a lot of sex workshops at Burning Man. Yeah. Uh, I remember going to, I went to a G-spot massage workshop where everybody's getting their G-spots massaged in a great big tent with, a, with about 200 other couples. I know. Well, so it's so funny because I've never been to, to Burning Man, but I like desperately want to go. But so my friends would describe it to me. They're like, yeah, you can go and there's a tequila tent. There's like a cunnilingus tent. There's a breastfeeding tent. And I'm like, what? What is happening <laughs> at this place? But there's a whole, like, basically what I'm saying is there's a whole world of openness that is available at some place like Burning Man or some sort of subculture that's like that where it's free of judgment and people are just free to be themselves. So looking into different communities that are like that can be very helpful if you have a curiosity or an interest, which leads me to my next question that you had said we would talk about, which was how to talk to a woman that you're into and dating and having sex with about other things that you like in the bedroom, which may not be be her cup of tea, or maybe you don't even know it's her cup of tea, but things like kink or I don't even know, bringing third parties into the bedroom or I don't know. See, this is how prude I am that I don't, I can't even think of other options of things to do in the bedroom. But yeah, like, I mean, how- some people like to have a finger, a finger up their well, anus when exactly. they're, when they're um, I actually might have a hard time doing that unless I really, really love the man. Right. But see, this is this is the thing with vulnerability and love and connection. Somebody might at the beginning say, I'm not into that. But if you really get emotionally close and safe together, they might become into certain things. So um, you, if, if you're into things that are... Oh, I, I yeah. completely agree. I will tell you, if some person off the street said to me, you know, are you into doing X, Y, and Z? I'd be like, um, no, I'm not into that. But once I started caring about somebody, if they said, I'm really into I don't, something that is so far out there, for me, I'd be like, okay, well, we can try it. Like, I, 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 When I have an attachment to that person or an attraction or a desire to be with them, I am more open to things because it doesn't seem as extreme because it's coming out of somebody's mouth. That yeah, I really and like. one tip I have is if, if you're wanting to kind of open up the subject of kink, meaning meaning just atypical sexual preferences that, that aren't, you know, plain 
what most people probably think of as sex. Take a trip together to Good Vibrations or some other. Good Vibrations is a store that sells sex toys, and that won't yeah. cover that won't cover the whole topic. But it gets you guys being a little more like you're playful. You go into the sex store and you go, "Oh, look at this product. Would you want to try this product?" And okay, we're talking about products, but it gets you in a conversation that we're thinking outside the box. Like Marnie, when I went when I did this you know, quite a while ago now with a guy I was dating. There's this product where there's like this vibrator that the woman, you know, your woman, you go to a party with your date and the woman wears this vibrator inside her pants and it's a remote, remote oh, and you control, control and the guy can, can push the button and start vibrating you at it. any moment. I mean, it's just a playful thing. You're probably not going to have an orgasm, but, um, you know, you just get, open by going to a store like this yeah. it, it's like it's like going to a museum you know hey look at this exhibit look at that exhibit and and you start fantasizing well then it, then it's having something else plant the ideas in your head yeah it doesn't seem it's like changing your environment so it doesn't seem as extreme so for example if i was lying naked in my bed and my partner looked at me and he said do you want to try this do you want to try this do you want to try this uh, if it wasn't my thing i know that i would tense up I would try to be as open as possible and say, sure, but I wouldn't be 100% comfortable with it. But switching up the environment and then allowing my brain to explore that space Mm -hmm. with my partner or with the guy that I'm seeing, it doesn't feel as aggressive and as as, uh, high pressure. So I think that that's a a great suggestion of switching up the environment and even potentially having somebody else talk about the options that are out there and not you. Because I think for men and for women potentially hurting, insulting, or letting your partner down is not a great feeling. So yeah. I think having some other person at the store saying, oh, well, why don't you try this? Or have you ever explored this option? Or here's what you can do with X, Y, and Z. I think just having that third person involved to bring those things up can also be really helpful. Yeah. And another possibility along those lines is you, know, you do a podcast. There's a lot of sex just focused on sex podcasts and possibly probably a lot of YouTube things too, uh, which I haven't checked into so much. But with your partner, you say, well, let's listen to this podcast and and just use it as a point of discussion. Mm. I'm not trying to make a sales pitch here, but it just, we're still getting to know each other. And here's the thing that I, I want to emphasize too. Just because I liked X and Y with a former partner, I might not like X and Y as well as A and B with this new partner. So it's like maybe suggest to a new partner, you know, yeah, we've probably got some ideas about what we like and what we prefer, but let's, let's listen to some of these podcasts about what some of our options are, because perhaps we want to expand our range and be a little more adventurous now that we're together with somebody that, you know, we really dig. So bringing in third, I, you know, third parties, whether it's the store clerk. Well, or, it doesn't seem as as extreme. And then you get to hear like the larger story. So for example, if if you were to say to me, do you want to date a guy that sells crack? I, just as like a statement, right? Would you ever date this guy? He sells crack. I, I My first initial reaction is probably not. But then if I were to hear more about this guy, like I'm just saying, like just getting the full context of a situation, th- you can see the situation differently. You can see the person differently. You can understand why he sells crack. And that's why listening to podcasts or, sorry, that I'm getting so close to Mike, but listening to podcasts or going to a workshop can be more beneficial because you get to hear more of the story. You get to hear more of how things are done or why things are done and what people's experiences are and how they slowly got into trying these things as opposed to just jumping straight into you know, getting a finger shoved up their bum or something that seems very extreme for you. So I love that suggestion. And that's a great way for guys to ease women into things. Yeah. Even if she says no, give it some time because as the closeness and the safety increases, many, many people completely open up to almost any reasonable thing that isn't, you know, that isn't hurtful. Oh, for now, sure. There are, you know, for sure. There, and, and if you're into S&M, there's S&M communities, you know, because people have to kind of know the game there. That's a specific game with specific rules 
And you wouldn't want to bring a novice into that, but you could bring the novice to an event, you know, where s sure. m stuff is, is, is being educated about. I've been to parties where they have little you know, mini workshops at the parties. And they show you a little, you know, sort of the basics of S&M. And how to I have to start doing more workshops. All of this stuff. <laughs> so next time that we have a, a, a session with my husband and I, so Susan is uh, our couple's counselor. And if you can slyly suggest this <laughs> to, to, to do more workshops yeah. together, just bring it in there. I think that would be really interesting for my husband and I to do together. Yeah. He's a little bit more closed off with that stuff than I am. Um, but I, I would love... I would love doing that. Yeah, be and, amazing. And when, if if any of you are, you know, in a, any of you listeners are are in a couple relationship, and you you kind of think that you already know your partner and that they might be resistant, here's a, here's one way to pitch it, which is I feel so close to you, and I just want to see what's possible between us, yeah. even beyond what we're already doing. See if you can yeah. sell it in a positive, loving, pro relationship way rather than a complaint. And frankly, or like a really compl- dirty and raunchy way that has nothing to do with her. Oh, that, yeah, I, oh, I agree oh, with you. Yeah, yeah. If if you guys ha- have that established already, um, you know, raunchy is good for certain people. So you sort of have to find somebody who's compatible enough, but they don't. They don't have to immediately like exactly everything you like. Right. I love it. All right, Susan, uh, we are done with our show, but this has gone by very fast and I've loved everything that you've shared because I think it's I think it's important to talk about these things. And I think it's important to to talk about these things with somebody who is so open. Like you, you, you have tons of experiences, you've had sexual mentors. I just think like hearing the non-judgmental point of view on sex is really refreshing for a lot of guys. So thank you for, thank for being you. so open and yeah. sharing all of yeah. that information. To talk about sex. <laughs> it's amazing to talk about sex. So that some people are very uncomfortable with it and I get it. I have lots of, even my female friends, like there's certain friends who I can, I know I can say anything I want to about sex, certain words, but there's other people I know that e- either it just wasn't done in their family or it was never shared or they have a certain belief around sex where I know I have to go slower with talking about that stuff. And then as I do go slower and inch into it, then I, then I can be more open with them. But yeah, everybody thinks about sex differently. But the nice part is, is that everybody is open to learning. And or most people are open to learning and exploring their options and going baby step by baby step. So thank you for yes. teaching us okay. how to actually do those baby steps because I think it's really important. Um, do you want to tell people how they can get in touch with you, potentially work with you, or even yes. find out more about you. Yeah, I'm uh, Susan Campbell, and my website is susancampbell.com, and that's spelled like the Campbell Soup. And a list <laughs> of my workshops and events are there. And if you can get on my mailing list, I have a, a free blog, and I also have a free monthly group coaching call where you can Oh, get on cool. there and check me out, work with me for free. And I also give a free 15 minute introductory coaching call too, if you're thinking of going deeper with any of this material. And I am a trained sex therapist oh. as well as a trained clinical psychologist. Love it. Thank you so much. All right. So guys, please get in contact with Susan Campbell. If you want to improve your sex life and find out about other options that are available to you, uh, go check out Susan Campbell. Dot com. New episodes of the Ask Woman podcast come out every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific. And they are also now available on YouTube by going to youtube.com slash Marnie Kinners. And I post those Friday mornings. So if you want to listen to it on YouTube, check it out on Friday. If anybody wants to write in questions for our show, send them into ask at askwomenpodcast.com. We don't get to questions very often, but when we do, we overanalyze them to death so that even if the question is eight months old, I know that it's still really important information to tons of people that are listening and we dive into it heavily and break down everything about that specific question. So please send in questions that we can read on air and answer with our guests. We will see you guys next week. 